Again, send us your questions. We'll answer them on Twitter at FF Today. We got one now coming to us about the wide receiver position from Clinton. Clinton wants to know, would you start Hollywood Brown, Marquise Brown, over either Brandon Cooks or Calvin Ridley? This should be a fun debate. So, Dave, would you take Marquise Brown? Let's assume it's PPR. Brandon Cooks or Calvin Ridley? If I had to pick one, I would pick Ridley. If I had to pick two, it would be Ridley and Brown. I love what I've seen from him over the last two weeks. Certainly last week he got more playing time, had 38 routes run, had a bunch of targets, did amazing. Is it too soon to say he's matchup proof? He's only played two games, so I'm going to answer my own question and say yes. However, we are expecting a crazy high-scoring game. We know that the Ravens offensive line should be able to hold back the Chiefs pass rush. That should give Lamar Jackson time to throw. And as long as he's got that, Marquise Brown's got a chance to put up big numbers. Yeah, I would start Cooks and Ridley here. Brown is very, very close to this group of receivers. It's just going to take more than a couple of games before he moves him into that range. He's a top 28 receiver for me this week, but not a top 20 wide receiver. It's funny that you say that, though, Heath, because I know you like DJ Moore and what he's been able to do, and, and the targets have been fantastic, 24 targets for him. But Marquise Brown... Played very well in the first game against Miami. Right. Didn't have to do very much. It's that second game, though, that sold me. The 13 targets, the eight catches, that he's not just going to be a downfield, that's all he can do type of receiver. Now, he's clearly got to develop his route tree, but this is somebody that Lamar Jackson's just leaning on so much in a game that should be high scoring. Well, however you want to view it, 53 points. It may, I, I know you said you'd take the under. Right. You can't be going much under, though. No, but even if you use that 52 and a half, what the over-under is right now, Baltimore's got an implied total of 23. Like they're looking at three touchdowns. So I, I hope Marquise Brown gets one of them. Doesn't but have to, though. Right. He doesn't have to. He, he may have to yeah, to be he, better than those two guys. He may have the 8 for 80 like he saw last week in a game where low scoring, you know, from what the overall total was implied. So I would take Calvin Rid I would take Marquise Brown in PPR. I'd take Calvin Ridley in non-PPR. I just love the setup for Marquise Brown. He's one of my starting wide receivers as we look at the starts for week number three. I already told you about Larry Fitzgerald, Marquise Brown. Nelson Aguilar is in a very good spot because Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey not expected to play. Heath, I think you alluded to this yesterday. I just want to kind of reiterate what the numbers are. So he's played six games in his career where he's had double digits in targets, and he had 11 targets last week. Six of those, uh, five of those times, he scored at least 12 or more PPR points. You know what Carson Wentz is going to do. He comes from, Doug Peterson comes from the Andy Reid tree. Consolidate the targets to your main guys. Zach Ertz had 16 targets last week. Aguilar, 11 targets last week. The targets will be there for Nelson Aguilar. Buy into him as at least a number three receiver in three receiver leagues. But I think there's more upside for him. I like him as a starting wide receiver in all formats. The guys that I'm sitting this week, we'll talk about one in particular coming up. Emmanuel Sanders is one. Tyrell Williams, don't like the setup for him. Not 100%. Having to face that Viking secondary, I don't care that Devontae Adams did what he did last week, that Geronimo Allison scored. This is not the same setup. They have to go on the road to Minnesota, and I know that Williams has scored each of the last two weeks. He's somebody that you can get away from no better than a number three receiver in three receiver leagues. So, Dave, you like Emmanuel Sanders, and let's talk about this for a second here because he's been awesome through the first two weeks. I think it could be a little bit of a downgrade for him, though, going against Jair Alexander and his Packers secondary. That's if he lines up exclusively to Jair's side. We've also seen Emmanuel Sanders play in the slot this year. And I'm sorry, he's got 25% of the target share from Joe Flacco. And I know that doesn't sound like it's amazing, but what he's done with it is great. 16 catches, 184 yards. He scored in each of his first two games this season. And I think that Denver's going to play from behind. This is the number one target in their offense. I'm just putting two and two together. I'm starting Emmanuel Sanders this week. You're also starting John Brown. Love John Brown. Been loving him since the preseason, Jamie. I think that he will continue to be that 100% of snaps, high target volume, deep threat guy for the Buffalo Bills. We're big fans of Josh Allen this week. John Brown is one of the reasons why he was overthrown, believe it or not, on a what would have been 50-yard touchdown last week. Those big plays have been allowed by the Bengals' defense. They've had a bunch of breakdowns. I think John Brown's next. Love him in DFS because his price is still cheap, and I love him as a number two receiver this week as well. And you're sitting Josh Gordon. So let's go into the Patriots receivers because last week it was the Antonio Brown show on a limited basis. They didn't have to throw very much against the Dolphins. Who knows if they'll have to do the same thing against the Jets. But you are staying away from Josh Gordon. How do you feel in comparison to how do you feel about him in comparison to Julian Edelman and Antonio? Yeah, yeah, he's third best, and we saw it last week. We we talked about there being too many mouths to feed in this offense, and we were right. Except it was Antonio Brown that got all the feeding, and Julian Edelman and Josh Gordon were left high and dry. He's going to get some deep shots 
against this Jets defense, it's good. I think he's a flex. I don't want to start him as a number two receiver, knowing that the target share just won't be there for him. And knowing that the Patriots, they're going to build a lead, and then they're going to salt the game away with a lot of running. So Josh Gordon, tough for me to trust. Keith, let's move now to your starting wide receivers. And let's go back to a topic we started with at the top of the show. So you have the situation of Kyle Allen starting for the Panthers. At least that's the way it's trending. DJ Moore, though, is still somebody that you can buy into as a starter, according to you. Yeah, I still have no problem with it. I mean, I downgraded him a little bit. He's only number 12 for me in my wide receiver rankings in PPR this week. Hey, listen, this was a guy who, as a 21-year-old, put together one of the more efficient seasons on a per-target per basis that we have seen in the NFL. All he's done the first two weeks of the year is get 24 targets, dominating the target share. Been very good in terms of everything except for touchdowns. And you know me, I just don't think that two weeks of touchdown data is very predictive. I do think he'll score this week. He has the best matchup you could ask for against an Arizona defense that cannot stop anyone. And he was good last year when he played that one game with Kyle Allen. I'm not sure Kyle Allen is a worse passer right now than Cam Newton has been the first two weeks of the season. I just want to ask you quickly, just rank the Rams receivers because you had Robert Woods as a start. So comparing him to Cooper Cup, Brandon Cooks. Not I would PPR. PPR? Yep. Okay, I'll go with Cup, who I've been a little bit surprised in his target share so far. I'll go with Woods second, and then I'll go with Cooks third. I do think that Cooks booms, but I'm afraid that he's still drawing the more difficult coverage this week. Non-PPR? Non-PPR, I'll leave in the same same play. Same way. Okay. So, Robert Woods, you could buy back into after yep. a disappointing performance from last week. You're sitting. Also, Josh Gordon, Will Fuller, Stephon Diggs, though. That's the name that jumps out because a lot of people draft him to be a must-start receiver, but scored last week. Targets have not been there for him. Diggs, just like the other two receivers on this list, very talented wide receivers. I love what these guys do when they get the football. The thing that scares me to death is the pass volume in Minnesota. We saw week one, they threw 10 pass attempts. It was easy to laugh that off and say it won't happen again. Week two, they fell behind the Packers, had to play from behind, still only threw 32 passes. I'm, at, I'm projecting Kirk Cousins for 27 pass attempts this week. That's not enough for both Thielen and Diggs to be good on a normal basis. Maybe they both score a touchdown and it's fine this week. But I again, it's a situation where they should be up early. They shouldn't have to pass. Mike Zimmer doesn't want to throw unless he has to. Yeah, I'm nervous. It, it's a little hot, tough to trust Stephon Diggs right now. And Adam Thielen, you know, to the level of where they were drafted. These are some of the fears that we had about the volume in this offense. And it's playing itself 